JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFT's weekly market outlook webinar for the week May the 30th until June the 3rd. I am Haralamos Pissoros, head of research here at JFT, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, we have a very interesting week ahead of us with several important data uh, having the potential to reshape investors' view on the financial markets. Among them are the Chinese PMIs, Australia's GDP, the Canadian GDP, but even more crucial may be the Eurozone CPIs and the US employment uh, report as they can add credence or contradict market expectations with regards to, excuse me, with regards to the future course of monetary policy action from the ECB and uh, the Fed. We also have a Bank of Canada uh, interest rate uh, decision with expectations for another uh, double hike. Now let's take things from the beginning and in more detail. Today the calendar appears light with the US markets being closed in celebration of the Memorial Day. The only release worth mentioning is the preliminary German CPIs uh, for May. The headline CPI rate is forecast to have increased to 7.6% year over year from 7.4%, while the HICP1 is anticipated to have risen to 8% year over year from 7.8%. Now, although not a major market mover, uh, although not major market movers, the German rates could erase speculation that euro area inflation due out on Tuesday may accelerate as well. Now, on Tuesday ahead of the euro area inflation data and during the Asian session, the spotlight is likely to fall on the official Chinese PMIs for May. No forecast is available for the services and composite indices, while the manufacturing one is anticipated to have increased but to have remained within the below 50 territory. Specifically, it is expected to rise to 48 from 47.4. Now, if the other two indices follow suit, and uh, and stay below 50 as well. This will be the second month in a row where the PMIs point to contraction. So in our view, this uh, could suggest that uh, the zero COVID uh, policy of China continues to severely hurt uh, the economy. And thus we may see market participants abandoning equities and some of the risk linked currencies as well, like uh, the Aussie. Due to its very close trade ties with China, with China, the Australian economy is well affected by developments surrounding the Chinese one, and thus the data may spark concerns that the RBA may, may eventually not hike interest rates as many times as it is currently priced in. According to the ASX 30-day interbank cash rate uh, futures uh, yield curve, market participants are pricing in nearly nine more quarter point hikes uh, by the end of the year. So, for me, this uh, this allows this is uh, this gives ample room for disappointment. Let's say, and um, anything suggesting that nine hikes may not be delivered, uh, which is, stream, is, is still extremely uh, an extremely high number. Uh, anything that uh, does not support that could. Uh, be a disappointment and result in a slide in the Australian currency. Now, later in the day, during the European trading, we get the preliminary inflation data we already discussed from Eurozone. The headline rate is expected to have risen to 7.7% year over year from 7.4%, but the HICP excluding food ener and, and energy is forecast to have ticked down to 3.8% from 3.9%. Now, last week, ECB President Christine Lagarde 
said that the ECB is likely to take its deposit interest rate out of the negative territory by the end of September and could lift it further if needed. Given that the deposit rate is at minus 0.5%, we believe that this means two quarter point liftoffs, one in July and maybe one in September. And actually, some other officials, ECB officials, support uh, that view. So with that in mind, we believe that accelerating inflation could add more credits to the case, but in order for market participants uh, to start speculating that uh, this bank could deliver something more, we would like to see underlying inflation accelerating as well. Uh, so, summarizing, the underlying inflation rate is expected to tick down. That's why we don't believe that the data could raise speculation of, let's say, a double hike in, uh, in July. If it did, we do see underlying inflation accelerating as headline inflation, then yes, uh, speculation for more action uh, permitting could uh, could increase and thereby support the euro. In any case, the euro could continue gaining a bit uh, more against uh, the US dollar, but uh, we are reluctant to call for a long-term trend reversal. After all, the Fed is still expected to continue hiking at a faster pace than the ECB, and even if participants see the ECB accelerating, in, accelerating its own process, we doubt that euro area policymakers will adopt a path similar to that of the Fed. After all, the US economy is at a better shape than the Eurozone, which allows Fed officials to keep delivering double hikes despite some fears over a slowdown uh, in the US economy recently. Now, uh, Canada's GDP for the first quarter is also on Tuesday's agenda. The annualized quarter-over-quarter -quarter rate is forecast to have declined to 5.4% from 6.7%, but to be honest, we doubt that this could derail Bank of Canada officials from delivering uh, 50 basis points hike when they meet on Wednesday. After all, the data refer to the first quarter of uh, the year and we are already well in, well in the second quarter. The Bank of Canada itself appeared very optimistic at its latest gathering, which was held on April 13th, still after the first quarter was over. On top of that, Monthly data concerning uh, months of the second quarter are justifying the case for another double hike. The unemployment rate slid further, while inflation kept accelerating in both headline and core terms. Now, on Wednesday, during the Asian session, Australia's GDP for the first quarter is uh, to be released. The quarter over quarter rate is forecast to have slid to 0.7% year over, uh, excuse me, quarter over quarter from 3.4%, something that will take the year over year rate down to 3% from 4.2%. Yes, we are already into the second quarter, and yes, the RBA sounded relatively hoggish at its latest gathering, but the disappointment in Australia's data, especially after uh, week. Um, Chinese PMIs could indeed weigh on the Aussie, and as we already noted, this may be this may be because market participants remain extremely hoggish on their future rate hike uh, bets. Remember, uh, the, the financial community sees nearly nine more hikes by the RBA uh, until the end of the year. So, more disappointing data could result in a reality check uh, for investors, which could mean some more Aussie selling. Now, later in the day, we have the Bank of Canada interest rate decision with expectations pointing to another double hike. Thus, if indeed this is the case, we believe that investors will quickly turn their attention to the accompanying statement for clues and hints as to how this bank is planning to move forward. Last time, officials of the Bank of Canada decided to hike rates by 50 basis points as was expected, noting that interest rates will need to rise further. Governor Macklem specifically said we need higher rates and the economy can handle them, adding that they are prepared to move as forcefully as needed to get inflation on target. Now, with data since then keep adding uh, credits to that view, we believe that policymakers will maintain a hoish language which could support further the Canadian dollar. So, yes, a 50, a 50 basis points uh, rate hike is already priced in, but we don't expect... Um, 
these two two result in a, a slide in the Canadian dollar because in my humble opinion I believe that the Bank of Canada will remain relatively hoggish which could mean more uh, rate hikes and thus the Canadian dollar could uh, receive a lift off not solely by the double hike but for the uh, language of the Bank of Canada with regards to future rate increases now from the US we get the ISM manufacturing PMI for May with the forecast pointing to a slight to 54.5 from 55.4 this could confirm some what worries over a slowdown in the, US, in the US economy and perhaps increase to some extent speculation over a potential pause by the Fed after the summer. Remember that in the minutes of the latest FOMC gathering, it was noted that the number of officials said data had begun to indicate that inflation may no longer be worsening. So this raised speculation over a pause in monetary policy after the summer months. However, a more determinant data set over whether participants should be awaiting a policy break after uh, summer, maybe the US employment report for May, due to be released on Friday. Now we will get a first taste on how the US labor market, uh, excuse me, the US labor market has fared on uh, on Thursday when the ADP employment report for uh, the month of May is coming out. Though not a major market mover and not a perfect gauge of uh, the NFPs, it is the best we have. Expectations are for the private sector to have added 280,000 jobs during the month after adding 200, uh, 200, 247,000 in May. This is positive and although the forecast uh, for Friday's NFPs is for a slowdown, the actual figure is expected at 320,000, which in our view, taking into account uh, the continuous tightening of the, uh, of the US labor market, is still a decent number. Now ahead of the ADP, we get Australian uh, retail sales for April during the Asian session, while later the UK markets will be closed due to a bank holiday. Finally, on Friday, UK markets will, uh, will stay closed uh, due to a bank holiday, with uh, the Chinese one being closed as well uh, due to the Dragon Boat uh, Festival. As for the data, we get some final PMIs, which are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates, as well as Eurozone retail, sale, Eurozone's retail sales for April. However, the only top tier release we have on the agenda is the US employment report for May. Non-farm payrolls are expected to slow to 320K from 428K, while the unemployment rate is expected to have ticked down to 3.5% from 3.6%. Average hourly earnings are forecast to have accelerated to 0.4% month over month from 0.3%, taking the year over year rate though down to 5.2% from 5.5%. Now, in our view, this is a very good report. Despite a slowdown uh, to 320,000 jobs, uh, adding such a number of jobs at a time when the unemployment rate is uh, falling to 3.5%, in my opinion, is nothing but pos positive. However, the fact that wages are expected to, uh, to slow may add some validity to the view that inflation is not expected to worsen. We believe that such numbers, uh, uh, we, we believe that such employment numbers, on the one hand, having good uh, job data, and on the other hand, having slowing wages despite still being uh, well above the two uh, the, the two percent inflation target uh, so uh, in my opinion we believe that the expected numbers are a double-edged sword and i will explain why right now on the one hand the positive jobs growth and unemployment rate numbers could ease fears over a potential slowdown and thereby allow some allow some dollar buying as this uh, could mean the fed uh, could continue tightening without fear of causing a recession. On the other hand, slowing wages on a year-over-year -year basis could prompt some to sell as they become more convinced that the Fed will take a break after summer, due to inflation not expected to worsen. Our own view, though, is that the former group may prevail, as it is too early to say with certainty that inflation will not accelerate again. After all, in the minutes of the latest FOMC gathering, it was also revealed 
that policymakers agreed that it is too early to be confident that inflation has already peaked. So, if indeed uh, the employment report on Friday comes out strong as expected, we see the case for the dollar to rebound and uh, reverse some of its uh, latest uh, losses. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and, uh, and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 8.30 a.m. GMT. So, goodbye, have a nice day and a better rest of the week. JFT, just fair and direct.